Good morning, students. Welcome to your English one class today. Uh, last in the last class, I had, I mean, in the live class, we had done the lesson uh, ashes that made the trees bloom. Question answers are not over. I'll be sending you the answers, so please uh, you copy down the answers in your exercise copies. Today, I'll be starting a new lesson that is quality. Yes, quality lesson five that I will start today. So please uh, watch the video and. Uh, I will send you the objectives of this lesson. Objectives are as usually you know to read the text to understand, to identify new words, to understand in this in this lesson especially it is to understand what skill is and how a person loves what he does. A person who, who a person who loves his work. It's about loving your work. Yes, so this lesson will teach us that how you can respect what you do, whatever you do in life, you need to respect it. So this lesson will teach us that how to respect what you do and what others do. Okay, so continue watching or listening to the video and keep your books open when you are doing that. Okay, so continue watching and have a good day. So good morning everyone. Welcome to your English uh, one class. So first we'll do before you read. Can a shoemaker be called an artist? Yes, if he has the same skill and pride in his trade as in any other artist and the same respect for it too. Mr. Gessler, a German shoemaker settled in London, is a perfect artist. Read this story to see how he devotes his life to his art. So can a shoemaker also be an artist? Yes, of course, he is an artist because he makes shoes. He takes pride. He is proud of what he does. He is proud of every shoe that he makes. He is like any other artist, like a painter, like a person who draws, like a doctor, anybody who is proud of the skill. Same way a shoemaker also is proud of his skill or what he does. So this story is about Mr. Gessler, a German shoemaker from Germany, but who was now living in London. Now we will see in the course of this uh, story that he has not left his German accent. He is not able to speak English in the English accent. He is still speaking English in the German accent. We will see how that takes place in the story. But for the moment he is living in London. He is settled in London. He is living there now. So let's continue with the story uh, named Quality. The story's name is Quality. I knew him from the days of my extreme youth because he made my father's boots. He lived with his elder brother in his shop, which was in a small by street in a fashionable part of London. So I here is a narrator and he says that he knew him. So him most probably is Mr. Gessler, the German shoemaker. So he says, I knew him from the days of my extreme youth when I was very, very young. I knew Mr. Gessler because he made my father's boots. And that is how this narrator got introduced to Mr. Gessler because Mr. Gessler used to make his father's shoe that is this narrator's father's boots and he lived with his elder brother in his shop that is Mr. Gessler the shoemaker he lived in his shop with his elder brother which was in a small by street in a very very small narrow street in a fashionable part in a small street but in a very fashionable part where people used to go to buy fashionable clothes it was highly known for fashion so in this particular part of London, Mr. Gessler had his shoe shop in a small by street, not main road means, it does not mean main road, it means a by street, like a gully. So Mr. Gessler had his shoe shop here. The shop had a certain quiet distinction. Something was very, very unique about this shop. There, were, there was no sign upon it other than the name of Gessler Brothers. There was no sign on the shop. As you enter each shop, you have names, isn't it, given on the shops. But this particular shop had no name, just the name Gessler Brothers and nothing else was mentioned in the, at the entrance of the shop. And in the window, a few pairs of boots. Like window shopping, we go in the glass, they had just kept a few pairs, not filled up with shoes. He made only what was ordered. And what he made never failed to fit. So this Mr. Gessler made shoes to order. Whenever people would want shoes, they would come to him, they would order and then he would make. He did not have any ready-made shoes. You could not go to his shop and buy, just buy a pair of shoes. You would have to come to his shop, order for it and then he would make it. And his shoes never failed to fit. He made the perfect fit of shoes. 
To make boots, such boots as he made, seemed to me then and still seems to be mysterious and wonderful. And this uh, narrator, that is I, he found it very, very mysterious the way Mr. Gessler used to make shoes. The way he made shoes showed his pure love for shoemaking. And this, and this narrator would often get surprised by the Mr. Gessler's love for shoes and how he would make each shoe with so much of love and so much of care. And this may be the reason why the shoes would fit the people who came to order there. They would have the perfect fit, nothing tight, nothing loose, the perfect fit. And this was still very, very mysterious to the narrator. He did not know how Mr. Gessler did it. But then he loved what Mr. Gessler did. I remember well my shy remarks one day while stretching out to him my youthful foot. Isn't it awfully hard to do Mr. Gessler? And his answer given with a sudden smile from out of the redness of his beard. It is an art, he said. It is an art. So, so once he remembers an incident, the narrator remembers an incident. He says, I remember well my shy remarks. He was a very small boy, so he used to feel shy to talk. But then anyway, he would talk to this Mr. Gessler. And one day, while he was stretching out to him my youthful foot, while he was putting his foot out for Mr. Gessler to, to, to see the size of his feet, and he said, isn't it awfully hard? Isn't it awfully hard means very hard. Very hard to do Mr. Gessler, to, that is to make shoes. And his answer given with a sudden smile from out of the redness of his beard. It is an R. Redness of his beard means he had a red beard on his face. He had red hair. And out of this bearded face, he gave a smile. And he told this young narrator when he was young, it is an R. It is an art means it is an art. And he's saying it this way because that is his German accent. Like I told you in the beginning of this lesson, he, he has not forgotten his German accent. So he's speaking in that same accent. He's speaking English, no doubt, but in, an, in a German accent. So he says it is an art. It was not possible to go to him very often. Very often they could not go. They could not go to him every month to buy shoes. His boots lasted terribly, terribly in the sense here it lasted very, very long. Nowadays, if you go and buy shoes within one month, something is something gets torn, something gets broken, or the heel comes off, or something like that. But his shoes lasted terribly, that means for terribly long. They would never finish. It was like that. That might that's why he says lasted terribly long. Having something beyond the temporary. Let us continue. So his shoes lasted terribly long, having something beyond the temporary, some essence of boots stitch, some essence of boots stitched into them. So they were not temporary, they were quite permanent, yes. And they were like boots, how, like how boots used, should be. Boots should be lasting, long lasting. So this is how he used to make them. One went in, not as into most shops, but restfully as one enters a church and sitting on the single wooden chair waited. So one would not just go in very roughly. One would enter the Gessler brothers shop just, it seemed like one was entering a temple or a church. Very, very solemnly, very quietly, very calmly. And that person would enter this shop and go and sit on a wooden chair, which was there kept in the middle of the room where a person would sit and he would get his feet measured and Mr. Gessler would make the uh, boots or the shoes. Yes, and there was only one single wooden chair in the shop. A guttural sound and the tip-tap of his slippers beating the narrow wooden stairs and he would stand before one without coat, a little bend in leather apron with sleeves turned back, blinking as if awakened for some dream of boots. And this is how he would come down. So he and his brother lived upstairs of the shop. Up, there were two rooms upstairs and his brother and he would live upstairs and whenever somebody would come in the shop he would come down and the, when he would when he was coming down people could hear him walking down and he would be wearing he would be a little bent he wouldn't be wearing a coat without a coat but he would be wearing a leather apron like you can see in the picture in the next page and with sleeves turned back his hand sleeves would be up folded and he would be blinking and he would be ready to take orders you go to his shop order for a pair of boots and he would be ready to take your measurement very very happily and i would say how do you do mr gessler could you make me a pair of russian leather boots 
and this is what usually people would say now the narrator is just giving an example of what he used to say when he was small and when he used to go to this shop and for this particular moment he's saying or he's telling mr gessler to make him a russian to make him a pair of russian leather boots made out of russian leather without a word he would leave me retiring whence he came whence he came means from where he came he came from upstairs so he would go back upstairs without saying a word he was a man of very very few words he knew exactly what to do he was not a very talkative man he would listen to you listen to what you wanted and then he would go upstairs or into the other portion of the shop there were two portions maybe his workplace where he met people was different and where he would work was different where he would sleep was different and he also had a room upstairs like i told you so maybe he would go back there if he came from there he would go back there whence he came from wherever he came he would go back there after taking your orders after listening to what you exactly wanted okay so mr gessler would go back to from where he came or into the other portion of the shop and i would continue to rest in the wooden chair inhaling the incense of his trade like you can see in the picture there he would sit in the chair and he would uh, inhale inhale means breathe in the incense of his trade the smell of the leather the smell of the shoes it is sometimes uh, some people feel very nice with the smell of leather some people like the smell of petrol some people like the smell of leather so he would love this incense or the smell of the shop soon he would come back holding in his hand a piece of gold gold brown leather this was the usual thing what mr gessler did anybody who went to his shop would find the same procedure he would listen to what you wanted he would go back he would come back with a piece of leather and show you what you wanted for your choice so soon he would come back holding in his hand a piece of gold brown leather with eyes fixed on it he would remark what a beautiful piece when i too had admired it he would speak again when do you want them would look at his uh, accent so he would admire whatever he brought the piece of leather he brought he himself would admire that piece of leather and then he would ask the customer when do you want them and i would answer oh as soon as you conveniently can whenever you can you give me the shoes and he would say tomorrow fortnight tomorrow fortnight or if he were his elder brother he would say i will ask my brother if his brother came down to take the measurement then he would say i will ask my brother so this is a brother look at the spelling of brother b r u d d e r brother means brother in that german accent okay so i hope it is clear so far so already we see how mr gessler respects or loves what he does and that is making shoes he is a shoemaker or sometimes we call them in india cobblers but then he loves what he does and the way he he takes so much pride in showing his piece of leather tells us his love for his job okay so till here i will do for today i will end here and uh, for your homework from whatever we have done you frame three questions just three questions you frame three questions of your own and write their answers as well frame three questions of your own and write their answers in your copy okay that's your homework for those of you who don't watch the video you will not know the homework those of you who are watching or listen to the video you will know your homework exactly three questions of your own from beginning to where we have finished today with their answers that's it for today so bye bye and have a good day bye bye